Hello there, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube Medium and DanielRosal.tech. So for today's video, I want to discuss quickly uh, virtualization and what virtualization is. So this is just a quick schematic that I pulled up. So if you're new to Ubuntu Linux and you want to basically run other operating systems and what you can do nowadays, um, and I'm saying nowadays sort of in a very loose way because this technology is not exactly um, brand new off the assembly line, but basically you have your computer, so let's say your actual um, you know, Linux computer with hardware inside of it, then you have a CPU with hypervisor, and what the hypervisor does is basically allows you to um, actually give the resources. So your computer contains compute, it contains uh, you know, a uh, central processing unit, it contains a certain amount of RAM, and it contains you know, other components, your network cards, your graphics card, etc. But you can't really change these. These are fixed. The only way to actually add more RAM to a computer or upgrade from an i3 to an i5 or an i7 processor would be to open up the computer and physically connect more components with your hands. Um, but what you can do with the virtualization is basically take a chunk of those resources and the hypervisor um, will basically allow a virtualized operating system. So you can say, let's give Windows, let's say we have 16 gigs of RAM in our computer. So let's say um, we're gonna create a virtual uh, Windows virtual machine, a VM, and it's going to have, we're going to grant it access to up to two gigabytes of RAM and we're going to cap its uh, memory uh, at let's say 50 gigabytes. So and obviously in order to be able to do that you need to have more than you need to have more than basically all these um, virtual machines. So let's say we have a we can't have a Windows virtual machine with um, 100 gigabytes of storage when we actually only have sorry 500 let's say we only have 240 gigabytes of storage in the actual computer. So uh, it's less than your resources, but in order to make this magic work, you need a um, basically a virtualization tool. So there's a couple for um, Windows that um, are you know just the standard options basically. Uh, both of these are free, so you don't need to um, pay to you know to use these. The first one is or Oracle VirtualBox. So this is actually what I used for I use this for a number of years and it's regularly updated and uh, the other one is VMware Workstation Player and both of these are totally compatible with um, with Ubuntu Linux so to download Workstation Player you just go for this option Workstation Player for Linux and you can see I've downloaded this bundle uh, you just need to give that bundle file um, I think executable permissions uh, run it over the command line uh, that'll bring up this installation process and a few minutes later you'll have your Windows. Then, just to install a Windows VM, you just download download Windows basically, and you just get that uh, that ISO file. Uh, it's a big download. It's you know something in the region of. It depends exactly now. I'm just picking up this uh, uh, Hebrew geolocal. Uh, I can actually just change it here at the bottom. Go to English, of some sort. Indian English is fine. It's still English. It's just Australian English. Um, and you can just basically select your, you know, Windows 10, um, confirm and download that ISO file, and then basically, so you can have a totally uh, free uh, Windows virtual machine in Linux. And the only caveat for Windows is that you can't, because unless you have an activation key to actually activate that ISO, um, you can't really uh, personalize the computer. But uh, it's totally legal, and it's, uh, you know, it's a Microsoft official download, and it's basically more than enough. So. Um, in terms of these two virtual box versus uh, VMware workstation player, this isn't the uh, I didn't I'm not an expert. Uh, in fact, I don't even know that much. I just prefer uh, VMware. As I said, I've used both, uh, and after a few years, I just you know kind of moved over to VMware, and that's now where I do my virtualization. Um, now the other thing that's easy, uh, so that's how to do Windows. So basically, you install your virtual box or VMware, download your Windows ISO, and then you have a fully functional. Uh, Windows virtual machine on your Linux computer. The second one that is easy and that's uh, Android and there are a few emulators so I'm just showing you the ones I use personally. So Jenny Motion Android emulator um, you can also actually do it in uh, you can actually use VirtualBox just download an Android uh, ISO but this is this is nicer um, and then just click on the download button and uh, you can go for this and again it's a, a free tool if you're using it for non-commercial use so down this download for Linux here is the one you would need on Ubuntu 
and uh, then you basically uh, create a machine from a template so Android can be easily um, virtualized on Linux because of the fact that Android is a fork of Linux and not actually for that reason more more that the architecture is similar uh, likewise Windows can be easily virtualized the ones that cannot be easily virtualized the common operating systems of course that only really leaves iOS and Mac OS Mac OS um, I really don't have much of a need uh, to do these. Um, I think for Mac OS there is a workaround, so someone else's video can explain this. So there is a tutorial here. I think iOS is impossible because um, of the fact that the architecture is so different. Because it's it's for ARM based processors. So there is one there one or two ARM based desktop computers have come to market and uh, I believe that Ubuntu, certainly Debian, has an ARM based uh, installation so you can run it on ARM based um, hardware but for your average, compu average computer user uh, virtualizing iOS on VirtualBox on Ubuntu is not going to be feasible. So really your, your uh, easy options for Linux for virtualization are Windows and um, Android. I think that's enough for most people. If you're really into Mac, then you know you should probably just install Mac. Being able to virtualize Windows so easily has been kind of a game changer for Linux users because we used to have these awkward solutions like I've been using Linux, Linux long enough to remember using Wine and that never worked particularly well. There's other things like Play in Linux. None of these kind of things work that well. VirtualBox just gives you an actual Windows machine. So the only thing to point out, and this is why I'm just opening up my task manager here, um, is to say that basically these use a lot of RAM. So obviously when you're using a uh, virtual machine um, you're going to be using the RAM that is in the uh, in the computer. So you know I have 16 gigabytes of RAM in this machine. I'm going to be building a new computer soon. I'll probably uh, I'm going to go for something more high spec uh, than what I have currently. Um, but you can see how far that's going to shoot up. So we're using, we can see this is memory here, this is CPU. 2720 megabytes of our this is basically 16 gigs so we're using almost three gigabytes of ram and you can see the process is consuming the most uh memory over here so i've just gone ahead and um popped up my vmware workstation player non-commercial use only and i'm using over here the uh version 15 1552 uh, so that's the one that I have currently on my system. Now it can be a little bit buggy. I found some bugs about this in terms of, uh, you know, basically it will, when I shut it down, it'll crash the whole system. I've opened a couple of threads about this on the VMware community forums. There's a couple of bugs, but overall I would say it works really well. So you may notice that I actually have an Ubuntu virtual machine here. And the reason you might want to do something like this, there's a couple of other things you might want to do with virtual machines. A popular one is to run Kali Linux. So Kali is used for uh, you know penetration testing and security testing and stuff like that so it's a specialized distro of Ubuntu a lot of people that are learning uh, CyberSec uh, prefer to actually just keep that as a virtual machine instead of you know because for your day-to-day -day OS it's easier to, to, to just use something like stock Ubuntu so a lot of people would have a Kali virtual machine and just use boot into that um, and so long as all the network interfaces are exposed uh, sorry so long as all the USB devices are exposed and it's connected over Ethernet um, on the software level, and it runs exactly like a real computer. Um, and that's the kind of crazy thing about virtualization is they're just really mini computers. So basically, if we just take a look here, here's Windows, and you can just click on Power On. I've given this four gigabytes of my RAM, as you can see, and uh, you can actually go in and, and again, this is a beautiful thing about VMs because they are not real, they're not hardware-based computers, but they are computers. It's kind of a weird concept to wrap your head around. But that's how vir that's how virtualization works. So I can shut it down, and once it's cold, I can go ahead and give it eight gigs of RAM. I can decide, uh, you know, etc. And as I said, you're really capped, practically capped, maximum recommended memory. That's why it's giving, it's coming up here as 14 gigabytes because I only have 16 in my computer. So even doing that would leave me with only two gigabytes of RAM for my host. So this is called the host, what you're running the stuff on, and this is called the guest. So I'm going to go back to four as I had it, but obviously on a real computer you couldn't just use a slider and toggle RAM uh, or add tiny increments. You would need to basically, as I said, unscrew the computer, 
um, and and you know actually put in more. Uh, the network adapter. These are all settings you can talk. You can actually also toggle how many processor cores it has. Um, I'm not going to go for. Um, and this is important. You can do a shared folder. Uh, I have mine disabled, but um, that basically means you can cre you can create a folder on your host on your host um, on Ubuntu, and then basically just drop files and then they'll actually appear in Windows and on the Windows side it will appear as a networked device. So it's very cool and uh, I just actually go ahead and set this up. Um, I'm not sure why it's not set up on this. It might be a new virtual machine. So I use my Windows one uh, for testing out for the odd time I really need to use something Windows related and I also use it for like, and this is um, another point about the need for, and this is why I have Ubuntu as a sandbox environment. So let's say I'm testing out software doing a product review and I don't really trust the product, I don't want to put that on my actual computer. So by putting it on a virtual machine, it's kind of using it as a sandbox environment. So it's uh, isolated from the actual rest of the file system. So I'm just going to go ahead and watch, watch what happens to my memory here when I boot into my Windows. So about three gigs at the moment. Okay, need to figure this out. Um, and now we're up to as we're going through the boot sequence tiny not really very significant jump I'm just gonna move this over here a bit um, the other thing you might want to add or you might need to add I should say is um, um, guest tools and if you go into virtual virtual machine VMware tools so it's kind of specific by the um, OS route. so now look look at what's going on we're using Windows and I'm sure the people will be familiar with the Windows interface um, within Linux so that is pretty cool so uh, if I can just get into this so you need to do as, as the screen says control alt is how you basically escape uh, your keyboard and mouse from the virtual machine otherwise you're locked within it so this is my Windows desktop I was taking a look earlier in the week at fastest VPN for Windows and you can see I'm surprised my memory hasn't jumped uh, hasn't jumped higher so far. But we can actually toggle um, in the VMware, um, and we can see usually there is VMware player. So um, it, it might take a little bit to catch up. But the CPU, as you can see, has gone up to uh, 55 uh, 55 percent, and basically the boot sequence puts a bit of pressure. So that's actually not as bad as I would have expected. It's only spiked a small bit. Um, and you can see the process here, VMware WMX. It is consuming 2.7 um, gigabytes here of uh, memory um, and 4% of CPU. Um, so now I'm going to go and I'm just going to go ahead and shut this down. Um, you know, I'll just minimize it. The second thing that I'm going to show before I end this video is Jenny Motion, and as I said, Jenny Motion is the Android emulator for uh, that I use on Ubuntu. So I just opened my Jenny Motion here, and you can see I have a Galaxy S10 in this 1440 by 3040 screen resolution. Now, um, if you're installing Jenny Motion, and I showed you the website, then you need to install VirtualBox. Um, that's because it actually basically just runs off VirtualBox. So if I go into my VirtualBox, um, I'll be able to basically see that there is a virtual machine. Uh, to correspond with this uh, virtual Android device. So we can see by popping into Oracle VirtualBox we have the Galaxy S10 and that corresponds with this guy over here. So um, Jenny Motion is a really really cool tool. What you can do is if you go into you can create new virtual devices really easily so just, just click on the plus menu here and you can see look, look at this it's super cool. Uh, you can see the Android version so Android 4.4 um, Technically, it's actually the Android API because that's what it's using to construct these machines. Uh, we can go all the way to 5, all the way down to the latest version they have, which is uh, 10. So just make sure that you are going for the latest. Generally, you want to be going for the latest uh, Android version. Uh, you can go for a tablet, Google Pixel. Uh, if I go next here, and you can give it a name, choose the uh, resolution, the, def the native display resolution. Um, as I say, you can even select the Android version here how many processor is memory kind of a similar process and whether you want to use bridged or NAT for network mode and just go for NAT unless you unless you know what you're doing and you want to use bridge for a different reason so this is it and uh, watch what happens now I can just go into the start and again we're using a virtual machine but this time we're um, virtualizing Android so just remember these things are heavy so we probably will see a bigger spike and I think maybe that's why I went down to VM where I found the 
I found that it was easier on the hardware so we've now gone up to four gigs of memory and I think the reason I run into difficulties with virtual machines sometimes is I typically have about a hundred chrome tabs open and that's an exaggeration but uh, typically I'm running these with a lot of browser tabs so I'm just running the system cold and we're now up to five gigs of memory but we are currently running two virtual machines one um, Android and one Windows now those virtual machines are both doing basically nothing at the moment um, but uh, you know w once you start running the software on them then clearly they're going to be that RAM overhead is going to add to your baseline RAM overhead so we can go into them just see out of curiosity Jenny motion here 1% CPU 216 gigs I'm not sure that's right there could be another process I'm missing but that's what's showing um, at the moment in terms of CPU and RAM consumption and the other thing you want to do for this is install you can see this open G apps so this basically allows you to install um, your uh, you know I've just created a lock pad and lo look how cool this is it's a real Android device I even configured a lock if I can make this work on my mouse which I'm struggling with there we go and uh, I can pull down the notifications and this is all of course virtualized it's not a real Android computer uh, it assigns it a the virtual machine gives it a fake phone number like a virtual phone number and it pretends that it has a data and you can hear maybe the Android notifications going on and if I go into my um, call up my apps you know I can go into um, I can install apps through the Play Store I can really associate this with my um, actual uh, Google account and actually purchase apps with it the camera clearly won't do anything um, I can even spoof my geolocation by going on to GPS and uh, going into the map option and turning on GPS and then selecting where I want to virtually be this looks like somewhere in Denmark I'm guessing for some reason this is very weird um, all right somewhere in Scandinavia but um, you know so you could I don't want to say that there are nefarious uses for this but there there are um, and you can go on to like Google Chrome and basically just use this and you can see it's not that slow it's certainly usable uh, this is great that if you want to basically test out and I was testing out the uh, a VPN for Android yesterday and assessing the speed so this is why I have the YouTube open here on some uh, Sky News Australia but uh, you know it's fully functional and what you can do is just use this to and I'm just typing in my keyboard here and typing on my keyboard using my mouse but uh, it's as if I'm using a real Android and I've taken off the VPN so I'm getting my local geolocation um, so that's it it's very cool this can be used to test out test products on Android it can be used to actually test if you're a software developer you want to test and the app you're developing on Android you can just drop in your APK files here so very powerful uh, very easy uh, to virtualize both Windows and Android on an Ubuntu host so uh, that's really all I have for this video I wanted to just show what's easy what's not and to recap Mac OS and iOS are uh, more difficult but uh, Android and Windows very doable uh, anyone who wants to get in touch uh, my uh, website can be found at danielrosehill.com with two L's and my email is youtube at danielrosehill.com so thank you for watching this video